Well, hello there and good afternoon. This is Business Today right here on KTN News. My name is Kelvin Nyakundi. Now, let's start with some uh, cooperative bank group has reported a profit before tax of 16.4 billion shillings for the first half of 2023, representing a 7.4% growth compared to 15.3 billion shillings recorded in the first half of 2022. Now, the increase represents a profit after tax of 12.1 billion shillings compared to 11.5 billion shillings reported in 2022. Now, the bank has registered a growth in its total assets to 664.9 billion shillings, which is a 10.1% increase from 603.9 billion shillings in the same period last year. Now, net loans and advances have grown to 365.4 billion shillings compared to 330.1 billion shillings in 2022, while customer deposits grew to 463. 9 billion shillings, which is a 9.7% increase from, from 423 billion shillings. Shareholders' funds also have grown to 108.3 billion shillings, which is an 11.9% increase from 96.7 billion in 2022. Now, the cost of power in the country has led the government to look at geothermal development as the solution in lowering the hefty power bills for Kenyans. Now, the geothermal development company is tasked with developing steam fields and selling geothermal steam for electricity generation to Kenyan and private investors. Our business reporter, Jasmine Murani, explored the work that GDC does in developing geothermal power and brings us this report. Is the heart of Baringo County. More specifically, this is Parker Hills, the site where the geothermal development company is currently drilling its fourth well, a successful location by all means. The wells here are as productive as can be, with a recently commissioned well at Parker Hills producing 22 megawatts against an expectation of about 5 megawatts. When you drill a well which discharges at 22 megawatts, and normally the average capacity of most of the wells are five megawatts. It's like one well in four. So rather than drill four, five wells at a, at a cost of about, uh, you know, a well is about a few million dollars, yeah? Million You're talking dollars. about five million dollars per well. So when you drill one and you get that capacity of 20, 22 megawatts, that is a big saving. Kenya currently stands as seventh place globally in geothermal production. This placing could get better if efforts by the GDC are realized. Predominantly, Kenya base load is geothermal and hydro. But because of climate change issues, we're now relying on geothermal, which dispatches at a levelized uh, availability of uh, uh, 95, 92, 95 percent. And then so for us as a country, with the climate change issue, you know, we've come out of a very difficult um, drought condition the, in the last four years. And our hydrology, which normally discharges at about 30% of our energy mix, went down from 30% to 10%. Uh, when we have this kind of um, capacity in geothermal and uh, the kind of capacity in our people, the commitment in government to continue investing in geothermal, we can see Kenya being energy secure we can see the cost of energy in Kenya coming down significantly. We can see Kenya being a very attractive destination for global farms who want greening of their products, which will be hitting the market with a premium because this climate change issue is a, a big challenge. The process of harnessing geothermal power is an expensive and risky venture for investors warranting the government's move to create the geothermal development company. GDC is tasked with developing steam fields and selling geothermal steam for electricity generation to Kenjen and to private investors. The average power to Mwananchi is about 22, uh, 20, 22 US cents. So if we can uh, duplicate uh, these projects at uh, about 7 US cents, uh, several of them we can actually bring the cost of power down. Uh, our projection in terms of where we are currently is that uh, we've drilled uh, several wells and we are at uh, 100 megawatts. Uh, our first phase, because we are going to develop this project in phases, so the first phase of 100 megawatts, uh, essentially we should be able to, we have already done the steam, 
Uh, what is next is uh, power plant construction. To access the steam resource, the geothermal company takes a number of steps. The first is geothermal exploration. Geophysicists will explore parameters that may reveal structures that influence the properties of the geothermal system. It is at this stage that an area with the geothermal resource beneath the ground will be identified. Before we come as drillers, there are scientists who come to the ground to see the existence of geothermal. Those are the scientists, the geophysics, geologists, so they'll come to the ground do their, use their means to test whether there is geothermal. So they'll go around doing uh, all those magnetic, magnetic uh, geologists collecting the rocks, the geochemists uh, collecting the gases. So when they have, when they are, they are uh, finished their work, they'll uh, cite a well and say, yes, let's see. We think there's team here. Then now uh, we come as drilling to come and confirm what they have seen from their uh, survey studies. GDC will then undertake a test drill, an exploratory phase to confirm the existence and potential of the geothermal reservoir. Water is critical to the drilling process. This is Chesiran Water Point. Behind me is Lake Baringo. It is here that the Geothermal Development Company sources its water to supply the local community, but more importantly, to power its drilling functions, a critical step in the process of geothermal development. Then comes the drilling, the final and most expensive phase of the geothermal exploration process. It begins with field development, which can cost upwards of 30 million. Once the field is ready, drilling of both production and reinjection wells begins. Drilling of a single well can cost between 500 to 600 million shillings. GDC will drill between two to three wells in a single well pad. The first well in any project represents the highest risk when we do like four wells here it has several advantages one uh, like this land we pay the community for using their land so when we minimize cutting several sites we do when we do four wells here instead of cutting four sites we have done it in one site mean we have saved the cost of uh, uh, acquiring another land two but when it also come to when we'll be building the power plant it, the pipe work will be less so we will have less cost in terms of piping uh, and uh, environmentally of course we'll be uh, we'll save the environment not cutting more trees and things like that and it also saves in terms of cost you see now cutting this well parts costs about 30, 30 to 40 million so if you cut another site, that means another 40 million. So it will save us uh, money on cutting another site, money on, on acquiring a new site. Once the drilling of a well is concluded, the valves are closed to pave way for the drilling of other wells in the well pad, which upon completion will see the beginning of the development of infrastructure to facilitate operations of a power plant. The electricity generated will then be sent to a power station and from there to the transmission grid. This will mean financial independence for GDC. Uh, what it means for GDC is that since 2009 when we were formed, we've been dependent on government. I mean, we've been doing our developments based on uh, exchequer financing. But today, uh, we have uh, Ocaria where we get uh, quite some good amount of money. Uh, we are also trying to ensure that uh, Meningai also gets us, uh, uh, gets uh, on, online. Uh, as the CS has indicated, we have just witnessed uh, the starting of the first uh, 35 megawatts. We have two additional power plants. And uh, if we then get this power plant by 2028, uh, GDC from there on will actually be self-sustaining. Jasmine Murani for KTN News. All right now, members of parliament from sugar-growing regions of Nyan 